Hey everyone, want to do a quick, uh, super quick video here on subwoofer. So this is a Polk Audio uh, PSW505. Um, I've had this for about five, six years, and recently it's just the the output on it was really, really low. Like I thought there was something wrong with you know my my preamp, my home theater receiver. I was trying to up the gain on that, and I just wasn't getting any output out of this. So finally pulled it down here, decided to check it out, and turn off you know testing the bench. It was, something was wrong. It just wasn't producing any strong output. So. Um, pretty popular subwoofer. This was on sale for on Amazon uh, a year ago for uh, often under three hundred dollars. So you know, being a kind of a low-end sub, even though I said the MSRP was like five or six hundred or something like that, it was actually decent. Uh, it was okay for me. I've used it in my home theater for quite some time. Anyway, the repair, just to cut to the chase, I started doing some video of this, and it just it's it's not worth really step by stepping through it. Um, this is my unit here. So if you look at the board. This is the style of board that's actually in there. So you got a switch mode power supply, then a NAMP board, and another kind of preamp board in there. There's two styles of supplies in this. Um, there's another one that's different than this that I've actually seen more often when I was kind of trying to research this issue. But um, ultimately, all it came down to was capacitors. So I replaced all the capacitors in this unit. They're just these, you know, Shenzhen garbage capacitors that. Are no, 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 you know, no name brand on them or very something I've never heard of before, but it doesn't matter. They're just absolute trash. So half of them I was testing just on various ESR meters, and like some of them weren't even coming up, you know, as a as a capacitor. Like it was just a, a open circuit at that point. So they were, I mean, just absolute short. So they were useless anyway. So I replaced all the capacitors in there, and I've got it hooked up just to my uh, audio generator here. So 30 hertz. Uh, not sure if you can hear that or not. But here, let's do this. Let's drop it down to 10 hertz. That'll work. So, at least you can see it now. But it is back to full strength. So, that's it. I know for a while Polk was um, swapping out these supplies. If you called them and contact their support, you know, and reported an issue. Uh, but if you want to fix this yourself, strictly that's it. So there's a, there's two capacitors or three capacitors on the preamp board. There's about eh, ten or so on the amp board itself. And then the main supply, there's one snuck right back in there between those two. I didn't pull off. I didn't pull off the uh, heat sink there. See where the see what those are. They're they're probably just transistors for the switch mode supply, I would guess. And then there's two more stuck back there uh, behind the transformer, and that's it. So like 15 capacitors total overall. So again, I used good quality uh, for the uh, all the polarized capacitors, Panasonic 150 degree C rate caps, and then for the couple in there, there is a couple non-polarized. Um, I used the what are they in the Muse? I think that's either Nishikon or Nippon County County. I can't remember. Or no, those are ELNAs. I think. Regardless, use high quality caps, and you'll be good to go. So uh, I'm gonna throw this back together and be happy that I have this working again. So uh, again, if you have a PSW505 and you got like really low audio output, uh, just replace all the capacitors and you should be good. So that's it. Hopefully this is helpful. Thanks for watching.